everybody. Lance Russell and Dave Brown right along ringside. And by golly, I'm excited about today. We got ourselves a great lineup, Davey, don't we? Oh, what a card. Opening match. We're going to have Mike Maroney in here. He will be going against Big Guy Mitchell well, in an opening single big, match. Like he is indeed. Well. Mm. Out of Canada. He will be here. Carl Fergie goes against beautiful Bobby Eaton in a single match. Tony Boyle's taking on the magnificent Zulu. Zulu back in the area here. Then it's going to be a, a mixed man's and midget man's uh, tag team match. On one side of the ring, Chief Thundercloud and Chief Lone Eagle. On the other, Cowboy Butch Cassidy and Jimmy Kent. Then, that's not all. Big expiration of tie match today. Stand by for this one. Dr. Bill Irwin and Bob Steele on one side of the ring. On the other side, it'll be the superstar, Bill Dundee, and he will have as his partner the Welshman, Tony Charles. Uh, we're looking forward to all of that. I'll tell you for a fact, the pairing in every doggone bow that we're really going to enjoy. We'll see them all. With Tony and magnificent Zulu back first time in about five years. Guy Mitchell, brand new. We haven't had him here on Championship Wrestling. The uh, Mid-America heavyweight champ, Bobby Eaton, will be in here against some tough competition. And Carl Fergie, that's it. By golly, I guess if we're going to get it all in, we better get at it, Dave. So I'll oh, tell you what it. we do. We'll tell him we'll be back. Ready to go with the opening bout in just one more. <laughs> We're back and ready. I guess we better ring the bell. Get ourselves underway with that opening bout in there. Mike Maroney is already in the ring. Referee Paul Morton waiting for it. And here he comes. Big Canadian Guy Mitchell. 280-something pounds. 87. Yeah, yeah, man. He is out here. And first time that we've had him on championship wrestling. Large gentleman. Let's have the official introductions. Davey? One fall, 15-minute time limit on the right of your screen there. From uh, Memphis, Tennessee, 233 pounds, Mike Maroney. And from Canada, again, at 287 pounds, Big Guy Mitchell. This will be one fall, 15-minute time limit. Referee Paul Morton. We're ready for it. Bell time, and here we go. Young Mike heading in there against a large one. Big Guy Mitchell using the right hand. Maroney's head popped into that top turnbuckle. Mitchell flips him back center of the ring. Forearm by Mitchell. Follows with a foot. Maroney struggling to get back to his feet. Mitchell helps him up, grabs him in a face lock. Big guy Mitchell, the Canadian, using the knee and the broad arm. He's firing that broad arm a lot. Trying to battle back, but being hammered down to the mat with a right arm. Mm. Fist. Big guy Mitchell. Our first look at him on championship wrestling. Free Paul Morton checking with Maroney. But the possibility of giving it up on submission, he said no. Actually, he didn't say no, he just didn't give it up. Mitchell working on him back in the corner. Maroney slowly back to his feet. This guy Mitchell fires that open hand. Maroney has not really been able to make a move so far. Mitchell has kept him tied up all the way. Up in the air. Oh. Hey, boy, Maroney is no lightweight either. No, Mitchell went isn't. straight up in the air. With him. Dropped him right down to that mat. We're two minutes, seven seconds into it. Mitchell drives him to the mat again, using the hands. Mitchell working pressure point, side of the neck. Where you get in a situation like Mike, where uh, Mitchell took over right at the beginning, it was pounding him with those big arms and all in there. Hey, he didn't get it. Nope, no leg drop for Maroney. Instead, he gets body slammed by big guy Mitchell. 
First neck breaker by Mitchell. A cover. One, two. It's all over. Two minutes, 56 seconds the time on a 2.56 and a rather convincing win for the Canadian. Time, two minutes, 56 seconds. Right now, let's go over to Lance. Okay, Davey, we uh right here after that uh, big victory with Guy Mitchell, his first... Uh, Listen, parent. my friend. Hey, hey please. Not I want to say one thing to no. you. Uh -uh. I intend to come in here and show you people what wrestling is all about. But I demand to have an interview when I defeat a capable opponent. And then next week... Okay, I want to be right here with you. Fine. Or we there's serious trouble. We always try to talk to the new wrestlers coming in. Uh, that isn't exactly who I was interested in talking to right at the moment. I wanted to bring in a gentleman that we always get such a kick out of seeing in the ring because he's a great athlete and has credentials behind him that just uh, will not stop. Not only that, outside of the ring, he's a fine, he's got a great sense of humor, and I'm talking about Tony Charles. Tony, I got to tell you, it is great to see you here. And if you'll just let me run down quickly without all of them, but I'll hit on the high spots. Former U.S. Junior Heavyweight, former World Junior Heavyweight that's Champion, that's and uh, by golly, just about everything else. Want to find out a little bit about that background. I know that uh, athletics has been a part of your life always, and you participated in uh, that English football over there, which is kind of a tough sport rugby. Well, it's not only English, you know, it's Welsh, basically. Yeah. And the Welsh get very upset when you D call it just English. I, I, I didn't mean to insult you. <laughs> no, no, but uh, well, it's called yeah. rugby. It's like your original game of football. It started years ago, and you've changed it. You've modified it over the years. We still play it in the original form without any pads or anything. Mm. So you get past a about a little bit, you know. And when, uh, when you're not out about uh, winning world titles and United States titles and other things, Tony, I know that you... Uh, uh, you kind of like to go uh, fishing and do a little skin diving down there and look at the fish. And every now and then you were telling me about one of them, you ran into some kind of fish down there. <laughs> you, you Jack Revell, very frightening. Yeah, yeah. Very frightening. I'm going to tell you something about sport. Out of all the major sports, competition, they talk about fitness. Well, to me, the biggest form of fitness is relaxation. And I just love to fish. I can relax completely. And it makes a difference because when you can relax a tense muscle, it's ready to take up action again and go. Uh, Tony, I, I got to go back to that fishing story because Tony made the statement to me. He said all of a sudden he came face to face with this Jack Ravel, which is kind of an ugly looking fish. It frightened fish. me. Yeah. <laughs> it frightened him. He well, said that. 60 pounds, you know, it's very ugly with large teeth. <laughs> and Tony said, but at the same time, he took a look at this face right here and he said, I frightened him. <laughs> That's exactly true. I didn't know which was more frightening. He, did, he was about, I was pointing it this way and I was going to spear the fish right in front of me. I looked around and he's right there, right mm. there, nose to nose. Fancy him being right next to this nose. It's frightening. <laughs> Tony Charles, I can't tell you how good it is to have you here. Well, it's I... nice to be back. And the last time I was here, the, the fans in this area gave me a, a great reception. I loved it. And, of course, as you know, international. Uh, when I travel internationally, you hear about these spots that are hot. Yeah. Right now, this area is red hot. And I love to wrestle and I love to make money. So I'm going to be around. You just love to live, my friend, and that's great exactly. to see. I like to see it. Tony, we're going to be looking for you with Bill Dundee in a tag match a little bit later I'm on. I'm looking forward to that myself. Good to Thank have you, you here. One of my Thank favorite you. people, Tony Charles, one of the great champions around the entire world, and we're tickled to death to have him back. We're going to be back with wrestling action for you in just one moment. Finally happening Tuesday night, Louisville Garden. Yes, sir. The clash is on. The universal heartthrob, Austin Idol and Tommy Wildfire Rich. Long history of trouble. Last week, a couple of times you guys got into it, weren't even booked. This week, main event, Austin Idol and Tommy Rich. Let me tell you a little something right now, Rich. Let me lay something on you. You better get one thing positively crystal clear, and that little punk mind of yours you are now looking and listening at the truly the only kingpin of professional wrestling i am the man who made louisville gardens what it is today i am the man who made mid-south wrestling what it is today and i am the man who bears this world title right now this means that i am the epitome i have reached the pinnacle the top of the mountain 
And any time that you really feel that you have the guts and the ability to get in the ring with the idol, darling, then you've rang my telephone number. That's what it is. You've rang my number, and I will answer the call in Louisville because, darling, for the last two weeks in Louisville, I've had people standing on their feet, screaming at the top of their lungs, Yes, Austin, yes, we love you. Yes, Austin, we don't care what you do. Kick, bite, scratch, chew, punch, do whatever you want to do. But we love Austin Allen, we love Idlemania. And Tommy Rich, believe me one thing, just as sure as my name is Austin Idle, I'm going to take these five knuckles and jam them down your little punk throat Tuesday night in the Louisville Gardens. If you've got the guts, Show up, darling, because I'm going to whip your little fanny. Battle is joined. Austin Idol, a universal heart draw. You be there. What? Not ready to go. Jimmy Hart. Beautiful Bobby Eaton in the ring area right now. Competition stepping up the ringside. This is going to be a one-fall 15-minute time limit match. And introducing on the right of your screen from Atlanta, Georgia, 228 pounds, Carl Fergie. Going against him from Huntsville, Alabama. 227 pounds. And his manager, Jimmy Hart. Beautiful Bobby Eaton. One fall, 15-minute time limit. Referee is Jerry Calhoun. Beautiful Bobby. Removing the robe and the crown. And as soon as Jimmy Hart steps out of there, we will uh, wait the signal from the referee to ring the bell and get this one underway. Again, one fall, 15 minutes will be the time limit on it. Well, we are underway. Eaton against Carl Fergie. Fergie, we tend to think of as uh, a young wrestler sometimes who has not been wrestling for very many months. Actually, he's been wrestling a little bit longer than that. And as has been mentioned before, he may be one of the most underrated wrestlers anywhere around. Doesn't get lots of publicity. He'll give you a battle every time he steps through those ropes and into the ring. Got Eaton back on the ropes right now. Now, Bobby Eaton says, hey... He didn't hit me with that fist, but he was thinking about it, referee. You know, Carl uh, is such a really substantial, unassuming guy that a lot of people that go in the ring make the mistake of saying, oh, yeah, I'll beat this guy in a hurry. We'll be nothing to this. Uh, there's a good example right there. It just doesn't happen, Dave. He goes down with that arm bar on the mat. And Hart, by and large, hollering and screaming about the hair pulling, referee Jerry Calhoun, Trying to get in between and get them broken up. Ah, there's one. Big shoulder from Carl Fergie. Bobby Eaton down on the deck. Arm drag takes him over, bars it up tight. And Jimmy Hart again says, hey, don't get worried, don't get worried. Watch my boy, Carl Fergie. He's watching him all right. He's doing a pretty good job of handling him. One count, he really wasn't in a position to get a pin. Put punishment on Bobby. Eaton, holder of the uh, NWA Mid-America Championship. Eaton making good use of the ropes uh, so far in the match. Yeah, and that's not all bad, Dave. We've discoursed on that before, the fact that uh, that's a smart wrestler who will make use of it. Sometimes it becomes irritating to see a guy constantly go to the ropes in there whenever he's in the slightest trouble but uh by and large it's good smart tactics and carl fergie not worried about the tactics anything else he's thinking of one thing and do what he is and that is wrestle carl giving bobby eaton beautiful bobby a real hard way to go one fall 15 minute time limit bout we're two minutes 35 seconds into it right now Hart with a jumping jack chair of his up and down and up and down. Fergie with a wrist trying to turn it over. Bobby Eaton goes for the eyes. Well. He misses. 
Fergie, Fergie stepped aside. He hit the turnbuckle. Bang back out. Fergie took him right around. Goes into it on the deck with that arm bar in there. Carl Fergie hanging up tight. Beautiful Bobby hollering for Jimmy down there. He, I guess he wants him to throw him a cannon or something <laughs> like that to get Fergie off of him. Or at least that cane that he carries. Yeah, and down into the small package one. Ooh, and the Mid-America heavyweight champ just about went down on a three count as he goes to the eyes. With three minutes, 45 seconds into it. Why don't you sit down, Jimmy, and just quit the conversation? There's the big right hand with a referee blocked off. He nails Carl Fergie right in the face. Big backdrop, and Fergie is down. Eaton can go. There's no doubt about that. Two, and Carl kicks him off. But you know, all the Hearts wrestlers come out of come out of what I refer to as the old Sputnik Monroe school of wrestling. When in doubt, cheat. That's and right. uh, you just saw it a bit ago as Fergie. The first thing that Eaton did was not come back with a good counter move. He just went to gouge his eye. Look at that! Oh, did he ring his bell? He sent Eaton all the way across the ring. Fergie out. He's gotten that dander up in there. Sit down, Jimmy. Crying out loud. Back drop. Bobby Eaton down. One, two. And that's all Carl got out of Bobby Eaton. We're close to the five-minute mark. It's Eaton. Down on his knees. Fergie goes to stride. Hooks that arm back up. side on that arm referee asking him whether he wants to give it up but Carl was really not in a position to get it as far over as he needed to he's loosening it up taking the kinks out of it and going to the hair is beautiful Bobby who takes Fergie down to the mat But somewhere about the five-minute mark, we've got uh, two-thirds of the match to go. Right. Guess we're really closer to six minutes. Bobby Eaton. There's Jimmy Hart. Jimmy, please sit down. And just stay where you're supposed to stay. We're six minutes in right now. Six minutes. Two things Jimmy Hart can smell. One is money, and the other is a camera, so he can get in there and hog it and make noise and all of that kind of stuff. Put to the midsection. Eat. Once again, world-famous hair pull right there by Bobby Eaton as he took uh, Carl Fergie right off his feet while the referee was over with Jimmy Hart. thing about a guy like Eaton is sure he's got the mid-america heavyweight title but he can wrestle he can really go but uh, finds it cheaper and easier to go that shortcut way Eaton foot to the midsection nails Carl with a right hand follows it up into the rope off with a whip oh man point of the elbow right on the button Look at Eaton with those legs flying over. One, two, but Carl saves it. Had my hand on a rope, Dave. I thought that was it. He had it too. Look at Fergie fight back. We're seven and a half minutes in, so the time is half gone in the match. Halfway through the bout, Carl Fergie would be ahead on points on my card, but Eaton. Dangerous looking here. Going over. Fergie. Caught by a heart with a foot. We saw it. Eaton misses Fergie, and Fergie is out. He grabs Jimmy Hart. Bobby Eaton comes and drops down with a knee. 
The referee saved Hart's neck right there as Fergie went after him and coming off the rope, beaten one, two, three. And beautiful Bobby Eaton getting a win over Carl Fergie with the benefit of Hart. Now in that case, Hart thought he had turned the tide by tripping Carl. Eaton missed him, couldn't get the clincher, but while Carl's back was turned, that's when Bobby Eaton came over and slammed him on the back. Yeah, I know. Oh, I wish he'd have had you by that time. Yeah. 8.03 so, the time. 8.03, Davey. Okay, we've got more action. Carl Fergie is substantial effort. You better believe it. Son of a gun high. Well, anyhow. He ends up on the short side of the uh, vi victory in there as Bobby Eaton comes out the winner. We've got more action coming up for you. We'll be looking to it in just a moment. Back and ready for next action in just a moment where we'll have the magnificent Zulu and Tony Boyle standing with me right now. Sonny King. Sonny, you've been on the road and gone a lot. I haven't seen much of you. You've been nice and quiet, and you and I haven't had any arguments in a long time. Well, Lance, we won't have any now either. Good. You know, I sit back and I've watched a lot of things go down in Memphis. I watch a lot of matches, a lot of guys come, a lot of guys go. And I've been putting pieces together. Like, I'm on my same old mission as a couple of years ago. I'm going to restruct the whole area and have it ran the way I want to because so far I'm unsatisfied with it. Okay? Mm, yeah. So start with Lance Russell, Eddie Marlin, and whoever else. We are going to do whatever I say from now on. So if you people want a part of it, fine. If not, fine. I have a man. You guys have seen him before. But I put his head in the right place. And you know, Lance, why I became manager of the year is because I got people and straightened their head out and got their thinking right. Lance, we are going to capture the area same as we did when I brought in Joe LaDuke and John Louis. I want you to put the camera at the feet of this band and I want you to slowly bring it up and I want to show you a true mm. man. Lance Russell, this is the answer to everything that I want to do. That's go for Austin Idol, Jimmy Valiant, Billy Dundee, and anybody else who you may be here. Austin Idol get down on his knees, he posed, Jimmy Valiant posed, and I want to tell you something. Every title in this area is going to be controlled by Sonny King. Lance Russell, you will stand out here and consult me about every match that's going to go on in this area from now on because we shall capture it. Lance, if we don't do it with a body like this, then nobody's going to do it no place. And, for, and let me tell you something else for a little bit. Lance, I've heard about athletes in Memphis. I want to say I'm a qualified athlete and I am in, I, and I am in Memphis, okay? So I want you to serve that. For when you're talking, I think you're talking. Lance, this is talent. I'm going to develop it and I'm going to capture it. This area, the same as I did, Lance, when I brought in John Louis and Joe LaDuke, and you're a living witness. I came out here and told you exactly what I was going to do, and I did everything I said. I'm doing the same thing starting as of today. Okay, Sonny, I didn't interrupt you a bit. Let you have to say what you had to say. I will acknowledge the fact you were manager of the year. Uh, a couple of years ago, this guy right here, Magnificent Zulu, and... Uh, you got to figure how big he is if he's bigger than Sonny King. Sonny, we just hope that we can get along. I'm not sure that we can, but we'll try. We'll be interested in no, seeing this big guy in the ring. Lance Russell. Okay, Sonny King, if we can get him up in the ring, we'd like to see the magnificent Zulu. Davey, he's, he is large. <laughs> he's weighing in at about uh, 272 pounds. The Zulu heads for the ring right now. His opponent already waiting there. This will be a one-fall, 15-minute time limit match. From Arkansas at 191 pounds, and he'll be on the right of your screen, Tony Boyles going against Tony from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 272 pounds, the magnificent Zulu. One-fall, 15-minute time limit match. Paul Morton is the referee. Sonny King out to, oh, boy. Bell time. 
I hear, hate to hear Sonny start talking about that again because, man, he can really wear you out. That's true. Okay, let's get back to the match, Davey. Yes, sir. What a difference in size. Tony Boyles is fast, and he may need to use that speed before the match is over. As a matter of fact, all the way through the match, you better count on using speed because a large one he is going against in the magnificent Zulu. Tony giving away uh, approximately 80 pounds and four feet in height and something like that. I don't know whether you could see it. Uh, uh, while we were over there. I, I suspect maybe you could, but I don't know whether we had uh, a shot of Sonny and Zulu. Sonny King is big. Boy, yes. let me tell you. He, ooh. Man, look at that. And a cocoa butt. But this guy, looking at him and seeing him bigger than Sonny King, tells you what a massive man this magnificent Zulu is. I kind of hate to see a young fellow. When we saw him, Dave, uh, you and I saw him five years ago, he was just Starting into professional wrestling, I really kind of hate to see him tied up with Sonny King. Sonny yeah. says he can straighten his head out. He may do something else. That's head. very true. I tell you, Zulu with wild body slams and the strength in the upper body. And Zulu in control so far. Not so much a body slam there as just hanging him out in the air and letting him drop to the mat. Head to the turnbuckle. Boyle. All the way across the ring into the other turnbuckle. Whipped into the ropes. Ooh, a foot. Zulu was Sonny King. Giving him uh, instructions and encouragement. Oh, bear hug. Powerful. That's gotta be it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, just by looking at him, you knew it was over right there when he got the bear hug on him. Okay, there. let him go. Thank you. Zulu continuing to put the unnecessary punishment on uh, Tony Boyles. The influence of Sonny King, yeah. you can see yeah. right there. Yeah. Sonny uses that kind of tactics to intimidate people so that even next time or his next opponent or somebody will not forget. And that's exactly what Sonny does. Look at the size of that guy. Magnificent Zulu. Quite a specimen. And Dave, I was thinking, looking at him, there's Sonny King checking over his newest discovery, we'll say. And that's not really true. He's been in the action about five minutes. And Sonny and uh, Magnificent Zulu. Tell you what I was thinking. As tall as this guy and as long as his legs, he's got two things. One, he's got enormous strength. And his height and all makes it perfect for abdominal stretches, any kind oh, yeah. of the, the uh, where you need that leverage like mm -hmm. that, he can really get a hold of it. We'll see more of Magnificent Zulu and probably Sonny King. We're going to take time out, be back with action. Don't forget, we've got a great ex expiration of time match coming up with Bill Dundee and Tony Charles against Dr. Bill Irwin and Bob Steele. All of that action yet to come. And we'll be looking for it in just a moment. already heard about the incredible main event, Austin Idol against Tommy Rich. Let me give you the entire card Tuesday night in the Louisville Gardens. It's going to be Sonny King and the Angel challenging for the Mid-America Tag Championship held by Ken Lucas and Rick Morton. Tony Charles, the fine Welshman, will be going against the big Canadian Guy Mitchell. Robert Gibson going against Magnificent Zulu. You've got to see this guy again. Mm. Dr. Bill Irwin and Gypsy Joe will be in a tag match against the superstar Bill Dundee and Tojo Yamamoto. And then finally, the clash, the battle, the universal heartthrob, and wildfire Tommy Rich will be taking it on one-on-one, -on -one, officially meeting in that ring in a single match. Got to tell you, get there early. It is going to be a magnificent night of wrestling action in there. Louisville Gardens, don't you dare miss this coming week. When all that action takes place right before your eyes, we'll see you right there. You be sure and be there. Tag team match coming up here. One fall, 15-minute time limit. Introducing, first of all, the team that will be on the left of your screen, a total weight of 322 pounds. From San Antonio, Texas, at 105 pounds, Cowboy Butch Cassidy and his partner from South Carolina, Jimmy Kent. 
Going against them, total 293 pounds. From Newfoundland, Canada, at 92 pounds, Chief Lone Eagle, his partner from San Carlos, Arizona, Chief Thundercloud. This will be a one-fall 15-minute tag team match. And yeah. there is referee Jerry Calhoun. The, uh, of course, rules governing this in there that any time either one of the midget uh, men, um, Butch Cassidy or Lone Eagle, are in there, the other one must be in there, and, of course, vice versa. With Jimmy Canada and uh, Chief Thundercloud. They're off and running, Dave. Yes, sir. Butch Cassidy, Lone Eagle. Lone Eagle back into the ropes by Cassidy. Right around the referee, headed for Butch Cassidy. Cassidy hanging back in the corner. Butch Cassidy, top wrist lock, yanks Lone Eagle down to the mat. Perhaps hair pulling involved. Cassidy takes Lone Eagle back over to his corner. Jimmy Kent, yeah, you can see Kent holding him up there by the hair. Chief Thundercloud, Lone Eagle's partner, uh, trying to get him to help out. Butch Cassidy, firing the right hand, now the foot. Lone Eagle up in the air, body slam. To the turnbuckle. Butch Cassidy shoving the referee back uh, away from the action. Jimmy Kent up on the rope, picking up Lone Eagle. He's got him three and a half, four feet in the air. Uh, Kent happy with himself. Butch Cassidy makes the tag. Jimmy Kent coming in. And Kent wants to battle Lone Eagle, but uh, that's not the way the rules are. The rules say that when uh, the big guys are in there, when one of them is in, the other one has to be in. So it's Jimmy Kent against Chief Thundercloud. Lone Eagle. Right. And he took a pounder from Kent over in the corner, so he came after him. Between the legs of Chief Thundercloud, and Jimmy Kent runs right into Thundercloud's Right hand. Two minutes, 30 seconds into the action. More tag team action coming up. Boy, big expiration of time match coming up a little bit later today. Don't miss it. Bob Steele, Dr. Bill Irwin will be going against superstar Bill Dundee and the Welshman Tony Charles. Should be a fantastic expiration of time match. That's coming up later. Thundercloud, round behind Jimmy Kent. Gets him off his feet. Kent quickly bounces back. Thundercloud on his feet, and they're both staring at each other. Now, center of the ring. Thundercloud wrapping those hands around. Gets around behind Kent. He's got his arms tied up. Kent stomped his toes. Thundercloud whipped into the turnbuckle. Moves out of the corner, and Kent's knee hit the turnbuckle, not Thundercloud. Butch Cassidy going for Thundercloud, but he got Jimmy Kent instead, drove him to the mat. Kent says, hey, if you can't help, get out of here. Now, Tag has been made. Lone Eagle comes in. Thundercloud steps out. So Jimmy Kent says, okay. Come on in. Cowboy Butch Cassidy. Cassidy against Lone Eagle. Cassidy had the best of Lone Eagle pretty much uh, the first part of the match when we saw him. Lone Eagle with a headlock. With Lone Eagle is a power pack. Oh, isn't he? Yeah. Look at that. 
Four and a half minutes into the action. Cowboy Butch Cassidy got the uh, head scissors, but it's broken up by the referee. I didn't see exactly why. I think he's under the rope, but I'm not oh, sure. Okay. Lone Eagle into the rope. Stepped over. Oh, 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 oh tag Kent. Kent comes firing in there after him. Thundercloud steps in to uh, balance that a little bit. Oh, war dance time. Look out. Chief Thundercloud and old Chief Lone Eagle. Lone Eagle and uh, Cowboy Butch Cassidy staying in there. Thundercloud and Kent back in the corner. Interesting pairing, uh, San Carlos, Arizona, and Newfoundland, Canada, yeah. between Thundercloud and Lone Eagle. The other side of the ring, San Antonio, Texas, South Carolina. Chris Larson. Cassidy. Look at that. Hey, Ooh, good move Wait. by Lone Eagle. Cassidy heads for those ropes. Jimmy Kent, his partner, whispering to uh, Cowboy Butch Cassidy. You can bet it wasn't any good news that they no. plan to pass on to Lone Eagle or Chief, Chief Thundercloud. Center of the ring, Cassidy, headlock. Lone Eagle's head now slammed into that middle turnbuckle. And into Jimmy Kent's boot that's over in his corner. Yes, sir, that's what the, the conference was about a moment ago. We're six minutes, 15 seconds into it. 6.15. Big elbow. Cassidy with a cover. That's two count. That's about it. Lone Eagle. Still going. That bee's still going. There's a tag by Cowboy Butch Cassidy. Oh, look at this. Huh? Kent jumps in there, and Lone Eagle rides him back to the corner. <laughs> Kept him there. Chief Thundercloud coming in. Oh boy, Kent really wanted to go after Lone Eagle. Thundercloud in the air. Body slammed by Jimmy Kent. A cover by Kent. One. Count of one and one and a half. That's about it. Seven minutes gone. Thundercloud off the rope. Up the bar by Jimmy Kent and another cover. Count of one is all he gets this time. Thundercloud reverses. Kent into the rope. Oh, oh. One, two, it's over. Uh -huh. What How a are you, shot. Jimmy Kent? Ooh, he came off those ropes. Kent let him have it. There's the victory dance by Chief Lone Eagle and Chief Thundercloud. They have put together a win here over Jimmy Kent and Cowboy Butch Cassidy. Seven minutes, 11 seconds, the time on it. And the discussion continues, but the match is over. Thundercloud and Lone Eagle, the winner. Man, you could hear that Tommy Hawk chop sing throughout mm. this whole studio. Kent, he's unhappy, irritated. Cowboy Butch Cassidy coming out, and they were on the short end of that decision in there. What an exciting son of a gun that was. Hey, we got another one coming up here, oh, Dr. Bill and yes, Bob sir. Steele facing the superstar and Tony Charles. All that action in just a moment. Today, we have seen big guy Mitchell, beautiful Bobby Eaton, the Mid-America champion, magnificent Zulu, and more. But we have been waiting for this expiration of time match all day long, and we're just about ready to get it underway. It will be a match to the expiration of time. Introducing at a total weight of 459 pounds on the left of your screen from Duluth, Minnesota, Dr. Bill Irwin, and from Montana, Bob Steele. Going against them, total weight 439 pounds. From South Wales, Great Britain, Tony Charles. And from Australia, the superstar, Bill Dundee. This match to the expiration of time, referee is Paul Morton. Mm, stand by for this one. It's going to be a dandy. I'm just thrilled to see Charles and Dundee teaming up together in there. And of course, Dr. Bill Irwin, we know a lot about. He's a goer himself. He can fly and hurt you. Big guy, about 242, something like that. And uh, his partner, Bob Steele, we're not as familiar with as we are, Irwin. Uh, with reputation, I know he's got to be a tough one. Bill time, and here we go. Tony Charles starts against Bob Steele. 
Tony on the left. Bob Steele circling around counterclockwise. Tony immediately slips to the side, goes around behind from the standing side headlock. Double leg takes him over, rolls him on the mat. And Dr. Bill Irwin uh, was like I was. We thought we might have a very short first fall there because yes, Irwin started into the ring, Dave. Tony Charles, one of my all-time favorites in the ring. I recall a match that uh, he and Dundee had a match uh, some years ago. One of the classic wrestling battles classic. of all time. Absolutely, yeah. Sure was. Charles winding it up, moves him over and down into a pin position, but Irwin again, popping in there. Mm. Those feet flying. Boy, Irwin, the high stepper, he uses those feet, knees, and lower legs. Yeah, Dr. Bill, two steps, and he's across a ring. He really can fly. Steel now with the uh, side headlock on Tony Charles. Tony goes down behind him, rolls him up into a position, but Steele grabs the ropes, and Irwin started in. The referee breaks the count. But Steele was at the ropes. Tony just missed him. Interesting already. Charles going for that pin, going for that pin. Move quickly. Yes. Now, hey, we got big Dr. Bill and Tony in there. Dundee down the line. Back into the corner now. Referee Paul Morton saying wrestle. Around behind. And look at that. Irwin took Charles off in a surprise move. But Tony just kept the momentum going. But they went all the way to the ropes in there. I think Irwin. We've told you, we have uh, respect for his ability, but not for some of his ideas and mouth. Irwin again goes behind, but look at Tony counter, and look at that. Head scissors, and Tony is right out of it. Dr. Bill Irwin looking at Tony Charles, saying, hey, what have I got a hold of here? I think he's got a hold of his hair right now. Pulls him back to the turnbuckle. Tony, uh, world junior heavyweight champ. Tony uh, beat one of the legendary junior heavyweights, Nelson Royal. Tag on Superstar. Tony just gobbles up that side headlock and holds him for Bill Dundee. Ooh. Billy, don't believe that was an open hand. the top with a mare and Dundee gets a count and a half out of it. Right back at Irwin who whipped him across the ring. Dundee down underneath. Catches a big guy. Hip toss and one and a half count again. That's all he can get on the top. He mares him over. Still going after him. The right shoulder really, yeah, it was up, up a couple of inches, Dave. Interesting hole there, combination head scissors and hair pull by Dr. Bill Irwin. Doesn't last long, though. Three and a half minutes uh, gone in this expiration of time match. First fall of action. Yeah, we've still got some time on this. We'll have yep. some expiration of time wrestling action. Once again, a mare rolled by Dundee, tagged Tony Charles. Tony right at the uh, bodies of Dundee and Irwin. Comes right over. The middle rope takes over on Dr. Bill. Goes around behind with a reverse face lock. He's got a chin lock on him, no choke hold. There's a tag from Steele and Irwin. But, well, I don't know whether the referee's going to allow it or not. Uh, yeah, he's, yeah, he's he sending uh, Irwin out of there. Contact was over the top rope, Lou said him like up to a foot. Bob Steele out of Montana goes, leg dive, steps over, toe hold on Tony Charles, and Charles kicks his way out. Look at the way he holds the leg, rolls it in to a pressure position. Nippy. Tony Charles on Bob Steele. Five minutes into the action, uh, this first ball, count of one. 
And at the five-minute mark, Tony Charles with Bob Steele. You know, the Tony, you, I guarantee you, you can't be around the guy an hour uh, without having a smile on your That's face because he just affects you that way. And Tony has that has that great ability to to approach it. And son of a gun, look at him right now. He's ready, boy. Just as tough as can be, but uh, uh, he's got a great attitude on life. Tony Charles takes the big foot from the doctor. <laughs> Bill Dundee hollering at Tony Charles. Come on, Tony. The doctor up in the air. Slam Charles down. He flies. This is the knee. And Tony rolls out of the way. <laughs> Turns around. Makes the tag on Bill Dundee. Tony giving Bill the I'm okay sign in there when he rolled out of the way. Slam all right. Irwin with a big knee on Dundee. The doctor, always dangerous, got not even a one count out of it. Comes back in with that knee, moves Dundee to the ropes, the whip coming off of it. Backdrop, he moves him way up in the air. Kicked some of the light stuff up there as he went over, he had him so high. Bob Steele takes over on the tag, and Dundee rolls him into a small package. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. That is the mistake a lot of people have made on Bill Dundee, Davey. They think they got him. Steele went down, and Dundee, bam, rolled him into that small package and got that count on him. Beautiful first ball. 6.33 the time on it. They're going to be checking that time out, and Bill Irwin hot about it. He doesn't like to lose them like that. He thought, all right, Bill, you had a tights and all of that. So Irwin and Bob Steele uh, dropped the uh, first ball. We'll have to check our time, see how much time I got left, and we'll be back with you in just a moment. Austin Idol, Tommy Rich, main event, Tuesday night, Louisville Gardens. Well, Austin Idol was out here. He was talking about the interference that came from Tommy Rich when he was in there wrestling. You know, Lance, that's a lie. You know, but there was one thing. Austin Idol, you did interfere in my match. You did run down there and jump in on mine. You know what it amounts to is Austin Idol is jealous of Tommy Rich. You know, he's got the name Universal Heart Drop. He ain't got the pretty hair. He ain't got the pretty ladies. He ain't got the pretty cars. I got it all, Idol, and you're wanting a piece of it. Well, you come down and you stuck your nose in, Idol, and you shouldn't have. Right there in Louisville, you said it's your town. Well, I'm going to show you what your town's got in store for you. You know, I got my manager, Jimmy Hart. That's the best move I ever made was getting a manager. He got my match with you, Idol. I said I want some other, and he got with the promoters, and he got my match. So, Idol, <laughs> universal heart drive. You know, you're going to be heart sick when I get through with you because I'm going to beat you, Idol, like you've never been beat before. And we'll see if them people are saying they love you. And you talk about your pretty ladies and stuff. Well, I had never ne even seen you run around with no women. I don't know if something's wrong with you or not. But when I get through with you right there in Louisville, Kentucky, Idol, <laughs> it's going to be all over. You know, you got that. You have a, He's going to be the shortest lived world heavyweight champion you ever seen because he ain't going to be able to defend the title no more right there in Louisville, Kentucky, when I get through with your heart throb. Well, Tommy, of course, it's a long burning uh, feud that you got. Yeah, you ain't lying, Lance. You talk about mad. If the heart throb's got the guts, he can bring himself out here right now because heart oh, throb, okay. I'm Don't sitting right that. on ready for you, brother. I'm waiting. I can't wait till Tuesday night. So you better be ready. You better be ready to get crazy because that's exactly what I'm going to do in Louisville, Kentucky. Idol. I'm coming after you, brother, and you're talking about wanting something. You know, you talk about your pretty ladies. When I get through with you, ain't nobody even going to look at you. Oh, boy, I'll tell you what, Dave. This is the kind of day that I just love on championship wrestling. We've had a lot of great matches in there. We got to see uh, at least one brand new, and Guy Mitchell, as a matter of fact, we had the uh, mixed, as they call it, a mixed midget and men's uh, match in there. And we uh, have no more time for, well, we had maybe about 50 seconds, to be perfectly honest about it. We're well, not going to get back time we get them into the ring and yeah. ring the bell, time we really. fire. With the Dundee, Tony Charles, uh, Dr. Bill Irwin, and uh, Bob Steele uh, matches in there. Just all in all, we have had a uh, tremendous day of action and saw... Uh, Sonny King's great new oh. uncle man, yeah. magnificent Zulu in there. 
You want to run down the results? All right, on in it? the opening match, uh, Guy Mitchell, big guy Mitchell was in that one against uh, Mike Maroney. It was Mitchell all the way. He was in control of that match for uh, almost three minutes and did win it over uh, Mike Maroney. Beautiful Bobby Eaton, the Mid-America champion, was uh, in here. He defeated uh, Carl Fergie. It was Magnificent Zulu over Tony Boyles. Chief Thundercloud, Chief Lone Eagle, defeated Cowboy Butch Cassidy and Jimmy Kent. And Dundee and Tony Charles win it in one fall over Dr. Bill Irwin and Bob Steele. I think I'll tell you one thing. Plenty of action right here, just as it always happens wherever it is around the entire area that we get to come in there. I still ask folks, when's Dave come and got to Lexington one yes, time? Yes, sir. Oh, got to get, got to get gotta to Louisville around, yeah. and Evansville and all of that with us. And we're looking forward to seeing everybody uh, any place that we can. We'll be seeing you a little bit later from ringside for Dave Brown. Lance Russell saying bye-bye, everybody. The announcers on this program are selected and paid by parties other than this station, namely the promoters of championship wrestling.